Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of To The Max Outdoors. It's the first day of, of uh, got to get out in the 2022 spring gobbler season. Um, didn't locate a bird first thing this morning. So moved over here to a different side of the property. As you can hear there behind us, we got a pump jack working for a well, but it is what it is. It did kick a ton of deer out of this bottom. And I think I kicked a hen off a nest. We'll go check that out here in a minute, but I don't know. Give a little owl hoot here and see if we get anything to respond. not really get much anything we do have some neighbors in below us here it's the next little hunting property <clears throat> below us and I've seen some side by tra side by side tracks around so they must have those uh, four wheeled blinds Not real sure if you guys hear that or not, but we do actually have two birds responding, probably in that three to four hundred yard range, and they're jakes because they're hitting real hard in three and four times. But the problem is, is where they're at, I can't get to them without either stepping on them or stepping on that pile of deer. There's about twelve deer in between me and those turkeys, and I'm just gonna sit here. I've got a decoy. And I'm going to sit here and try to close the distance. And if Jake comes in, Jake's going home. Stay tuned. So it's been a good solid hour and a half since I made that little raspy 
can yelp into a cut. No response from anything. The sun's coming out real good. It's pounding down into woods. Um, it's a pretty clear day. In my experience, you get a warmer day like this with straight sun. It's hard to get on a bird. It's hard to get on a bird mid morning. You, you really got to be on them. Um, I don't know what it is. They're way quieter. They're harder to find. Just makes the game a little makes the game a little more interesting. But I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pick up his decoy here and I'm gonna go hit a couple of these high ridges to the left and to the right here. The deer have moved on up through this bottom here. I, I can barely barely see the one out through there, three four hundred yards <clears throat> up in the neighbors. Uh, little I don't know what you call it pasture autumn olive pasture I guess I don't know what you call it there's no livestock in it but. so stay with me here we're going around and gun hour and a half two hours maybe and I'm not going to over call I'm just going to go up on these ridges do some soft yelps if I get a response try to make a move sit down and be pretty quiet maybe uh, I, I know in my experience calling on my part is a response to the bird if the, go if the bird's gobbling his head off I'll call at him more if he's not gobbling very much I'm not calling very much so it's just something I've learned in my 25 years of turkey hunting on my that noise you've been hearing in this video right there it is anybody that's not familiar with gas and oil country that pump jack right there can be a pain in the butt to hunt around You'll see it in a lot of my videos. It just happens to be in a perfect little low gap draw that I really like. All right, everyone, that puts an end to the day for me. It's uh, 20 to one right now. Oh, caught myself there on my box call. That puts an end to week one there for me. Um, like I said, I only got to hunt one day on the opening week. Um, wife and I was talking earlier this week uh, I've been turkey hunting on my own for this is my 25th year. I believe this is the first year I've ever missed opening day Nevertheless waiting clear till the weekend to hunt but Yeah, Max is playing really high high level travel baseball and we enjoy it. He enjoys it. So Wouldn't trade wouldn't trade baseball for hunting any day kids only kid for so long, but nevertheless, uh, I have a short work week coming up. I'll have four days this coming week, which will be the second week of the West Virginia season, I'll have four days to, to get after it. Max has no baseball that weekend e either, so I'm going to go home and get the boat out, um, get it all ready to go. Somehow pry a teenager out of bed Saturday morning at 3 o'clock and drag him to one of our local lakes and see if I can't get him up on a bird on public property. If not, I'm sure we can bring home some perch crappy and potentially walleye and there's a good morel patch there too so we'll see but anyways like i said end of week one i put out a video without any content in it but it is what it is and this channel's about reality and that's the reality of it bright clear day didn't get on a bird right out of the gate kind of limited here on property i can cover in my experience if you don't get on a bird as soon as you can in the morning on a bright clear day you're you're stuck unless you have a big pile of property to cover don't get me wrong you might be able to chase one down but bright clear day like there is today they don't talk a whole lot like i said i hit a few ridge tops some soft yelps no response i run through some of my local mushroom patches here didn't find anything that i wanted a lot of frost bit small grays but we'll leave them be um Another tip, weather's warming up, I pulled two ticks off of me. Take 30 seconds when you get back to the truck, car, house, four-wheeler, whatever it is, brush your paint legs, pull them up, look at your socks, don't get one of them little dirty dogs on you. Lyme disease is no joke, and I don't wish it on anybody. So, anyways, end of week one, 2022, West Virginia spring gobbler season. No success on my part, had a good time. And I'll catch you next week on next week's video.